Hi there, Dan Moran here from Concierge Diamonds. I want to talk to you a little bit about the four C's of diamonds. A lot of people have heard the phrase the four C's, but it's not clear to a lot of people what they actually mean and how they relate to each other. So there are four primary attributes that govern the value of a diamond, the so-called four C's. They are carat weight, color, clarity, and cut. Let's talk about each one in turn. Carat weight is very simple. What does the diamond weigh? A carat is one-fifth of a gram, so five carats equals one gram. There's no voodoo there. What's important to know is that, of course, the price of a diamond will increase as the weight of the stone increases. What's important to understand, though, is that it's not a linear relationship between weight and price. In other words, don't expect a five-carat diamond to cost five times as much as a one-carat diamond. If you're looking for that, you're going to have a bad day. Uh, in fact, it's an exponential increase in price with increase in size because larger diamonds are always more and more rare the bigger you get. So a five carat diamond, instead of costing five times as much as a one carat, could cost a hundred times as much as a one carat or more. So when you're shopping for a diamond, you need to really think about that curve of size versus price and decide for yourself where you want to be on that curve to stay within your budget while you trade off the other, the other C's. Our next uh, C is color. So a diamond is a crystal formed deep underground millions of years ago, and that crystal is made of carbon. However, when that carbon is crystallizing, there are always other chemicals present. Sometimes nitrogen, could be iron, could be boron, cobalt, no matter. A color is graded on a scale from D down to Z, with D being pure, pure, pure ice, no color to it at all. And the farther we go down the alphabet, you might see a little yellowish, a little brownish, a little greenish, a little grayish. Uh, the, the lower we get on the alphabet, the darker the diamond will be. When you're shopping for a diamond for an engagement ring, it's important to get a diamond that is white enough that it appears white, bright, shiny, sparkly to your naked eye. Uh, you don't necessarily need a D color. You need something that looks white to you. And don't let anybody, not me, not your friends, not a gem lab, not a salesman, not anybody else tell you how white the diamond is supposed to be. If it looks white to you, it's white. That's what you need to think about. But as a guideline for your budgeting purposes, expect to spend about 15% to go up one color. In other words, if you have a G color and you hold everything else equal, same size, same shape, same clarity, everything else the same, to go up to an F color, about 15%. That's not a hard and fast rule, but it's a pretty good rule of thumb to get you started. Our next C is clarity. Now, as I said, diamonds are a product of nature. That's a crystal made of carbon that formed many, many years ago deep underground. But when that crystal forms, it never forms perfectly. There's never a completely uniform, perfect diamond. Even though you've probably heard the term flawless diamond, there's really no such thing. It's just a question of, how many flaws does a diamond have, and how large are they? Now, you may hear, hear the term inclusions used to uh, discuss clarity in the diamond industry. That's because it's bad marketing to say flaws. But when you hear inclusions, think flaws, think imperfections. It means the same thing. My philosophy on clarity differs from what you may hear a lot in a retail environment. Because in retail, they're going to encourage you to buy very, very clean diamonds and make you feel as though an imperfect or flawed diamond somehow makes you a cheapskate. That's just not true and it's not fair. What's important is to treat clarity like a bar. In other words, we want to find a diamond that's clean enough that there's no inclusion that bothers your naked eye. In other words, it doesn't matter what you see in a microscope, it doesn't matter what you see in a magnifying glass, what matters is what you see when you look at it with your naked eye. Now, I always tell the same joke to illustrate this point, and it's a corny joke, but bear with me. I always say, if somebody comes up to you at a cocktail party with a diamond loop to try to examine your stone, you are at the wrong party. The only time my clients ever see a diamond under magnification is when they're sitting with me. They never look at it that way again. So what's important is to look at the diamond at the end of your arm, the way you will look at it on a daily basis in real life, and say to yourself, do I see any inclusions in the stone? And if so, do they bother me? If they do, that diamond is not clean enough for you. If they don't, stop there. So remember, clarity is a bar to get over. And once we're over the bar, I don't care if we're over it by an inch or by a mile. Get something clean enough for your naked eye 
and don't waste money going for gemological perfection. I'd much rather see you spending those extra thousands of dollars on size or on color or on a trip to Hawaii, but not wasting it on attributes you need a microscope to see. Now our fourth C is cut. There are two aspects to cut. One's very simple and one's very complicated. The simple aspect of cut is what shape do we want? Do we want something round? Do we want something squared? Do we want something pear-shaped? Well, that's up to you. But the second aspect, the more complicated aspect, is about the quality of the cut. So I brought here an example stone that we can use to talk about diamond cut. And no, this is not a real diamond. If it was, I would go buy a private island like Australia. Uh, but this will, will help us to illustrate how diamond cut should work. So for each cut, and this is an oval, it's an oval cut diamond, uh, for each cut it's very well understood how you're quote unquote supposed to cut it. In other words, the ratio of this facet to this facet, the angle where this meets this, the ratio of the length to the width to the height, they're, they're all very, very uh, precisely specified. And the reason why they're precisely specified is very important. In other words, why do I care about cut quality? Well, a diamond is a prism. Its fundamental uh, uniqueness, the reason why it's prized and valued, is because diamonds are very, very good at bending light. In other words, when you're buying a diamond, it's not like buying a car. It's not like buying a computer. A diamond doesn't have performance. A diamond doesn't have specs. A diamond doesn't do anything. Its only job is to be brilliant and shiny. And it does that by bending light. Now the optics of diamonds are super well understood. What angles do you want light to come into the diamond in order to maximize the amount of light that comes out the top? Because remember, light that goes out the bottom of the diamond, you can't see. Only light that comes out the top. That's why we care about cut quality. Because that cut is designed to maximize how much light is refracted out the top of the stone and back to your eye. That's why we care about it. Now today, we can very precisely measure cut. The, we, the diamond industry has equipment that can, with lasers, very, very precisely measure every angle, every facet, every intersection. And we can know for sure how well every diamond you see is cut. Well, that begs the question, why don't we just cut every diamond that way? If we have the tools to cut them that way, and if we have the tools to check, why don't we do it perfectly every time? Well, because again, a diamond is a product of nature. And the cutter has to work with whatever funky shaped rock comes out of the ground. And that cutter is always compromising between the quality of the cut and the carat weight. Because remember, I can't, if I get a funky shaped rock out of the ground, I can't take something from over here and stick it over there. I can't add, I can only subtract. So the cutter is always compromising between cut quality and carat weight. Now, in my business, that's a compromise that I take away from my customers. In other words, it's possible to find poorly cut diamonds that are off the ideal standard, and they're cheaper. You can save 10, 15, 20%. But it's not gonna look like a diamond. It's, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna look like a piece of glass. My philosophy is if you're gonna buy a diamond that's not cut right, don't buy a diamond. Buy a piece of glass. Save your money. So I only work with diamonds that are ideally cut, that are within that range of beautifully cut stones, because I don't expect you as a consumer to go through all the education to learn the difference what you need to do instead is to educate yourself on who you're working with and make sure that person leverages their expertise on your behalf. So that's my short primer on the four C's of diamonds. Please be in touch if you have any questions.